well, here I am. I'm working on Coach, a top 10 show, but they don't want to read Coach. Nobody else wants to read Coach. Your next job, you have to write something else to get that job. Okay, so I write a Frasier. Uh, somebody reads it, and Worldwide Pants is David Letterman's company, so somebody over there reads it. And there was a comedian on Letterman, and this comedian had been working for 12 years doing stand-up gigs around the country and never made it, and he had his one six-minute appearance on Letterman, and Letterman said there should be a show for that guy. So they set about looking for someone to create a show for this comedian. And this happens all the time. Comedians sign development deals, and then they find that pair them up with the writer to create the show for them. They had read my spec. They send me a tape of this comedian. I put it in, and I say, oh, that's that Ray Romano. I saw the episode that he was when he was on because I watched Letterman every night. Very funny. Hilarious routine. He said... Uh, you know, I, I, I've been trying to write new material, but since I've had twin baby boys, you know, it's been very hard to come up with anything new. They take up all my time. I wrote one new bit. Here, tell me if you think this is funny. Hey, hey. And I thought that was brilliant. And he goes, I'm glad you laughed at that. Otherwise, I was going to have to come down there and rub my nose in your bellies. Okay, so this is right up my alley, this type of humor. What he's talking about is very relatable, and it's, uh, it reminds me of young Bill Cosby. This is what Cosby, the type of very relatable, clean material that was. And it, uh, what I learned later, by the way, was he didn't always have that kind of material. It took having a family, getting married, and having children for him to focus the laser beam onto that. And that is what made him Raymond the Raymond we know. And so I responded to this because this is what this is what I like to. I had been married and did I have a boy? Yes, I had a boy. I had a baby. So he's speaking to me when he's wiggling the keys. I'm laughing. And I agree to meet with him, of course. He's going to come out to California. He's going to interview a showrunner, the potential people to create a show for him. And uh, we meet at Arts Deli on Ventura Boulevard where every sandwich is a work of art. And he starts telling stories about his family and how intrusive they are and this and 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 I'm for every story he has I have about my family and so we kind of hit it off I don't know if I was his first choice for the for the to create the show I think he wanted to do a show about a comedian who sits at the coffee shop and talks with his friends about the current subjects I, I was like well you know there is that show in 1995 when we met Seinfeld was a big hit and he was that guy so you can't be him, you know. But at the same time, if I am going to write a show for you, Raymond, uh, certainly since you never acted before, I'm not going to make you a gay astronaut from Cleveland. I think we should keep you pretty close to who you are just because you're going to be uncomfortable enough being on television. <laughs> you should try to stay close to who you are. So that seemed to make sense to everybody. The pitch was, really, you like this guy? The show's going to be like him. You know, and I still didn't know what exactly the show was going to be. So I talked to Ray, and I asked him, just because we're going to work together, if you and I were going to work together, I would say, so tell me about yourself. Where, where are you from? What do you do? Then he told me he's from Queens. And I said, oh, I was born in Queens, too. And he goes, and, uh, you know, I just uh, had these twin boys, and, and I have an older daughter, and I live with my wife, and my parents live very close by, and they're a big pain in the neck, and they always come over and... and uh, my brother is a New York City police sergeant. He lives with them. He's divorced. And he's hilarious because he, he, every bite of food he eats, he, he touches to his chin first because he's got a little OCD. And uh, he's, he's jealous of me, you know. And like he came to my house and he saw I had a cable ace award that I got for stand-up. And he picked it up and he went, never ends for Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond. And I just stopped him and I said, I don't think there's anything here that we could use for the show. No, I was kidding. I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought this is uh, the show. This is the show. He looked at me like, what? I'm like, your family is as good as anything else that we could come up with for you. Plus, you know it. You will be comfortable in this situation. 
and it's funny to me. And what I don't know about his people, I'm going to fill in with the characters of my people. So my mother is more the mother on the show than his mother. You know, my wife might be more my wife than his wife because I didn't know his wife. And yet we had, you know, my parents, even though they were 3,000 miles away, just as intrusive, you know, it's a metaphor that they live across the street. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to go off and write this. First, we have to pitch it to CBS, see if they like the premise. We go in, two bumps on a log, and we say, uh, here's the show. It's him and his family, and his parents live across the street with the brother. And they say, yeah, that's the show. Nobody's jumping up and down and saying, we have to have that show. This is going to change everything. This is an innovative idea. Well, it turns out, of course, in hindsight, this is the good idea because it's not high concept. It's low, low, low concept. And it turns out that low concept is the way to go because that's where you have the most mileage. You're not a slave to this ridiculous premise of we come from Mars and we're coming to Earth to see about your garbage. and You're a slave to that premise every, every week. Whereas if you take a simple life and make it interesting enough, you can run for a long time because... Our lives are running a long time, too.